Good morning. Today I will share with you some basic knowledge on limb node. You know limb node is a very important part of our immune system and probably you have seen uh, these groups of limb node in different regions during dissection or you have heard the term limb node during lecture classes and also in histology classes you have seen the microscopic structure of limb node. So, I am going to share you some basic anatomy of limb node. What is limb node? The term it indicates it is a nodular structure and it carries limb. Then the question may arise what is limb? Limb is a Latin word or lympha which means clear fluid. Where this clear fluid is formed and how it reaches the limb node? It will be the next question. You know in our body there is one blood vascular system through which the blood is flowing through the veins and arteries and alternative route of this blood vascular system is the lymphatic system through which the limb flows and this lymphatic system uh, it is consisting of the limb capillaries then limb vessels or lymphatic vessels then on the pathway of the lymphatic vessels there are limb nodes through which the limb passes or flows and filtration of limb occurs in these limb nodes and ultimately from these limb nodes the limb reaches the larger lymphatic ducts like thoracic duct or lymphatic duct and this duct it opens into the vena system and ultimately reaches the right atrium of the heart along with the other venous blood. Now look at this. This is arterial system. So, the blood is passing through these arteries and it becomes capillaries and from the capillaries the venules and then vein starts and this vein the flow just opposite to the arterial flow and reaches into the right atrium of the heart. This basic knowledge you know and if this is the extracellular space this one extra cellular space or intercellular space whatever may be the fluid or plasma from the capillary it enters into the extracellular space and here is the number of cells are there in this uh, and also the this is a they are all cells and the nucleus of these cells and this space is the intercellular space or called extracellular space in an adult about throughout the body about 30 liter of fluid 30 liter of fluid enters into this extracellular space from the blood vascular system and of which 27 liter of fluid 27 liter of fluid again it re-enters into the system re-enters into the system like this and through the vein it reaches into the heart then what remains about 3 liter of fluid still it remains in the extracellular space and this fluid this remaining part of the fluid in this extracellular space they enters into the lymph capillaries and so the lymph capillaries they start in the intercellular space and another system of vessel starts from the extracellular space and the lymph which is nothing but the remaining part of the extracellular fluid is called lymph. So, lymph is nothing, lymph is a clear fluid which is the remaining part of the fluid 
in the extracellular space which contains the macromolecule some particulate matters and colloids this matter they cannot enter into the venous system they remains in this space and they enters into this lymph capillaries and passes through the lymph vessels so this is the basic idea from where the lymph starts i already told you lymph this term derived from the word lympha what is meant by clear fluid so lymph is a clear fluid so if i ask you what is lymph lymph is nothing it is a clear fluid carried by the lymphatic capillaries from the extracellular space and this fluid which cannot enter into the venous system but can enter into the lymphatic system because these are large molecule the smaller molecules or crystalloids they enter into the vascular system but the colloids and some particulate matters they enter into the lymphatic system then after that what happens so now we know the lymph vessels carries lymph suppose this is the lymph vessels lymph vessels carries lymph this lymph vessel reaches into a oval or kidney shaped structure what is called a lymph node so this is lymph node so the lymph node you will find on the pathway of the lymphatic vessels every lymph node is having one capsule outside the lymph node this is the capsule and the shape of the lymph node is either small oval shaped or maybe kidney shaped or bean shaped like this because on one side there is some indentation and on other side it is it is convex through this convex side the lymph vessels enter into the lymph node through the capsule this blue one is a capsule and this is lymph node so all these are lymph vessels they are entering into the lymph node through the capsule and enter into the substance of the lymph node on the outer side here here this part is called the cortex this part is a cortex and inner to the cortex is the paracortex and this one is the medulla all these things you have learned from the your histology class this is a cortex and this one is a paracortex and this one is the medulla so the lymph vessels they are passing through the lymph node like this through the capsule and all these are called afferent lymph vessels afferent lymph vessels so from this diagram it is understood that the afferent vessels are multiple for a particular lymph node and every afferent lymph vessels should have valves so that the lymph flows into the lymph node in this direction so unidirectional flow all having valves enters into the lymph node and here when it is passing through the lymph node the lymph the lymph is filtered here filtered means through the lymph passes some bacteria some microbes some dust particles maybe some uh, debris so all these things are filtered in this lymph node after filtration the lymph vessel come out 
through the medulla here and this is called efferent limb vessels. So, efferent is on this side, they are all efferent, but this one is the efferent and here also you will get valves so that the limb flows only in one direction like this. And through the hilum, not only the efferent lymphatic vessel passes, through this hilum also blood vessels like artery, it enters into the limb node through the hilum, then veins, it enters through the hilum, rather it leave the hilum and nerves also they enter into the limb node through the hilum. Or if you are asked what are the structures passing through the hilum of a limb node, your answers will be number one, the efferent limb vessels, maybe more than one, usually one or maybe one or two efferent limb vessels, then artery enters, vein leaves, nerve enters. So, two structures they are leaving and two structures entering. Living structures are efferent limb vessels and the veins and structures entering into the limb node, artery and the nerve, these four structures. Then what happens if you get another limb node on the pathway here, suppose another limb node is here and it is the capsule of the limb node. So, again this efferent limb vessels, the efferent for this limb node but efferent for this limb node, the same thing, this limb vessels, it is efferent for this limb node but efferent for this limb node and this limb node again it receives other efferent limb vessels as well. But for this limb node, there will be one efferent limb vessels. So, from this diagram, we now understood that every limb node should have multiple efferent limb vessels, but through the hilum will pass only one or maximum two efferent limb vessels. And the area of drainage, suppose this limb vessels, it is coming, coming from a particular area. This limb vessel coming from a particular area, this is also coming from a particular area. So, this suppose if I mark it A, B or C. So, area A, it is drained by this limb node. Area B also drained by this limb node, area C also by this limb node. So, if any infection or some disease or some malignancy occurs in this area, the through the limb vessels, this infection or the malignant cells may pass through these limb vessels into the limb node. So, area of drainage also important. What are the areas is drained by one particular limb nodes? I will discuss in some other class uh, when I will uh, give you the regional uh, lymphatic system, suppose abdominal lymphatics or uh, lymphatics of the head neck region. In that case, it is very important to know the area of drainage. Next thing, the how many limb nodes are there in our body? Any idea? So, different books may tell you different numbers, but in standard books, standard textbooks, you will get the number is about 450 total limb nodes in an adult. And these limb nodes are distributed throughout the body. Throughout the body means head neck region, thorax, abdomen, then pelvic region, lower extremity, upper extremity like this in different regions of our body they are distributed. Uh, but their number are variable in different regions. If you consider the head neck region, head and neck region, the number 
usually 60 to 70 lymph nodes. If you consider thorax, their number of lymph nodes about 100. If you consider abdominal cavity or abdomen and pelvic cavity, pelvis, there you will get about 250 lymph nodes. And rest of the lymph nodes, they are situated or they are present in the upper limb and lower limb, particularly in the proximal part of the upper limb like axilla and in the proximal part of the lower limb like inguinal limb nodes. And these limb nodes are usually present in groups. So, we can um, designate cervical group of limb nodes in the cervix or in the neck region. In the thorax, mediastinal group of limb nodes. In the abdomen, maybe mesentery group of limb nodes, preaortic, paraortic group of limb nodes. In the pelvis, internal iliac group of limb node, like this. So, they are present in groups. And in the axilla, in case of the upper limb, axillary group of limb nodes. And similarly, for the lower limb, inguinal group of limb nodes. We will discuss these groups of limb nodes in separate day, in separate topic. But today just I am giving you the basic idea or basic knowledge of the lymphatic. So, thank you very much and please remember this basic knowledge on the lymph node.